The following segments are pre-recorded and sponsored by Longworth Productions. Employee Wellness on Triad Today. Hello everyone, I'm Jim Longworth and welcome to another edition of Triad Today, coming to you once again from the Senior Botanical Garden in Kernersville. We'll tell you more about them later on, and later on is when the roundtable shows up and we'll get into Lord knows what kind of controversies with them, so stay tuned for that. Lots in store for you over the next half hour. Where we want to start is talking about a very special and important association and two uh, local community servants who know all about that association. And we're with, of course, my good buddies, David Daggett and Griff Schuler from Daggett Schuler Law. Good to see you guys. Hey, Jim. Thanks, Jim. The association I'm referring to is the Down Syndrome Association, which you guys have been involved in. So very quickly, let's look back to this past weekend, David. There was a special event going on. What was that? It was the 26th annual Buddy Walk. Uh, in the greater Winston-Salem area. It was held out at West Forsyth High School. And the Buddy Walk is a day to celebrate people with Down syndrome. It's also one of their larger fundraising events right. of the year. Right. Uh, we had over a thousand people out. And it was really, really a fun day. The, the, the interesting thing to me, and what's probably the most meaningful to me, is one of the pillars of the Down Syndrome Association is the idea of acceptance and inclusion. And I always think the Down Syndrome folks are a lesson to us. They're very non-judgmental. They love everybody. They accept us and include us regardless of our race, our color, right. our gender, or anything else. What a beautiful message for society. Absolutely. And there were a lot of activities going on. Didn't you email me something about a mosaic? Yeah, oh, this was, this was really neat. And I, I think you might have a photo of it. Is, is we had a guy named Nick Bradley made a mosaic out of Rubik's Cubes. And he built that as the day went along. <laughs> and it ended up being two of our Down syndrome young people, Ella that? and Isabella, in the picture with the Rubik's Cube. One of the most amazing that's things neat. I've ever seen. That's and it, neat. Unf it unfolded be before our eyes as the morning progressed. I think that's great. Griff, let's just pause for a second and just remind people very briefly what the Down Syndrome Association does uh, in general and for parents of Down's kids. Well, it's a, a very supportive group, and that's really one of the, the first uh, hallmarks of the group is, is providing uh, support for the, for the parents. In addition to that is the, uh, um, is the ability for uh, them to come together for events, um, which raises public awareness. Right. Um, and there's educational um, opportunities for the families. And then I think a part that, that most people may not know about is it, it is really focused on providing employment opportunities for those in the community that have Down syndrome. And that's a wonderful part of the association. You know, since Griff mentioned it, that reminds me, David, uh, I think it was Catherine sent me an email the other day about a pop-up restaurant. Right, right. So, so this is kind of a cool thing that the Down Syndrome Association does. They have what they call pop-up restaurants. And what that basically is, is uh, individuals with Down syndrome work for an evening in a restaurant okay. uh, with a, a server, a greeter, that sort of thing. The, this was started before COVID, right. and this it's starting back up for the first time since COVID. And it's to expose both the person with Down syndrome to the work opportunities, expose the public to the people with Down syndrome, and potentially lead to some jobs that are available at the various establishments. It's we, a real cool thing. Yeah, and we have about a minute left. I'm going to ask both of you to respond to this. So many things you guys are involved with, so many community projects, you know, school backpacks and, and safe, sober and everything. Why support uh, Down Syndrome Association? I think one of the things is, is they are so committed as a group um, and they're, they're so tight-knit and they have so many great causes throughout the entire year. I think a lot of groups that David and I are involved with they may only have one event for, for a, a group, but part of what they do is they have events throughout the year um, that brings the, the uh, uh, families together and invites the better um, the, uh, group of the, of the community to come right. together as well. Right, David. Well, I had a cousin with Down syndrome who I've always said she was my favorite cousin. I apologize to all my other cousins. But 
It has always been very, very meaningful to me. And working with the Down syndrome community, it kind of fills my soul in a way that nothing else does. And I, bet. I just, I love it. I bet. Thanks for sharing that. Up on screen, dsaws.org is how you get to learn more about Down Syndrome Association. And you can always get in touch with these gentlemen if you need them. DaggettSewerLaw.com or call 724-1234. Guys, I appreciate all you do for the community. And, and Dave, you're going to stay for the roundtable, right? Sure, sure. Right. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. We'll be right back after this. Here's a sad fact. In the last presidential election, over 81 million people didn't even bother to show up and vote. So it's important to register. Right, Key? Absolutely. But one of the most important part of it is education. Education is key to this election. Educating you on the policies that the, the candidates are do talking about. Educating you on the candidates and issues. So please get educated. This is brought to you by Ground Game Innovations. Spartans are the teachers, artists, nurses, scientists, and leaders who build our communities. Back to on Tribe today. Always glad we can spend a few minutes with the good folks at Inmar Intelligence. And uh, we have a lovely lady with us now that uh, I met at some uh, meetings over at Inmar. So glad we could snag her to be on the show. Latrina McClinton's Director of Compensation and Benefits at Inmar. Good to see you. Thank you, Jim. Good to see you as well. Let's explain to people a little bit uh, about what you do and uh, some of your background, where you're from, and we'll, we'll talk later about some of the other things. Sure. I am the Director of Benefits and Compensation at MR. I've been with the organization for a little over 12 years, and I'm so fortunate to work in, in a position that lines my passion for helping people um, with what I do on a daily basis. I am a uh, Born in Winston and been here pretty much most of my life. Okay, same with me. I, yeah. You know, it's a, yeah, what high school did you go to? I went to R.J. Reynolds High School. Hey, me too. Yeah. Well, let's just do the rest of the segment about Reynolds okay. High School. <laughs> so, we'll just forget the rest of the thing. No, no, no. Uh, seriously, now knowing your position, I think you sent me an email one day, or China sent it to me, about offering the right tools and support for employees. Now, what's that all about? Why is that important? It's important because employees need a good value for the benefits and for working for an organization that uh, values them and provides them and meets the needs of the, themselves and their family. And so we pride ourselves in offering a comprehensive benefits package that meets the needs of the employees and their family. And we recognize through benchmarking and talking with our associates that they have uh, special needs. We recently recognized that there was a opportunity to provide better men mental health care benefits. That's a big topic these days, it about, is. You know, mental wellness for employees and having a workspace and a work environment that, that is conducive to that. So how do you help them? Well, I mean, one of the things that we've done is we recently implemented about a year ago a new mental health care benefit called Lyra Health. And Lyra Health provides our employees with access to over 8,000 licensed therapists and they get free sessions for themselves and their families. And the, the one thing that is so special about this benefit is that prior to this benefit, on average, it took about 21 days to see a therapist when you were having a mental health care challenge. And that's not quick enough. No. And so now our employees, in some cases, can talk to a therapist the same day. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's neat. Now, uh, my friend Spencer Baird, who, of course, is CEO of Inmar Intelligence and the leadership team, they're all in on this. They're very supportive. But... Going back in time a little bit, how did you get them to be so supportive? How did you bring them along and say, hey, this is important. We need your help. It starts with data. We saw an uptick in our mental health care claims uh, after the pandemic. We're just like we're not immune, just like other employers probably saw that as well. And so we knew we had to do something about it. So data tells the story. We use the data. And plus, we have a compassionate executive leadership team. They care about our associates. And so they were on board from the start. I want to circle back to the first question we were talking about. You know, we were kidding around about you and I going to Reynolds High School and growing up in this area. What was there anything in your background that sort of makes what you're doing gratifying now that you're working with these employees, you're offering these support services? Sort of tie it all together for me. So I've had the opportunity uh, to work as in, in the area of benefits for over 20 years, even prior to my tenure at MR. I spent uh, about 13 years at Pepsi, and uh, for seven of those years, I was their benefits manager. So right. I, I think that ties in. I'm uh, 
just connect it to naturally helping people is a passion for me. So I love to do things and projects that support others. I, I think all of that ties in with it. And just, again, just understanding that we've got a complicated healthcare system and being able to navigate that. And so I think those things are important to me and being able to do that in my role with the support of a fantastic team that I have. Uh, it, it, it's all interconnected. Well, what you said a minute ago about the uh, the wait times and everything for getting help, you're knocking down those barriers of accessibility. And I just can't tell you how important that is for everybody, not just the folks at NMAR, but especially in your niche there. Uh, before I forget about it, let's put up on screen, NMAR.com is the general website. If you'd like more information, NMAR.com. And Latrina, thanks for all you do. Thank you for having me. And thank you. All right. We come back sometime. I will. All right. We'll be right back after this. Hi, I'm Jim Longworth, reminding you that Try It Today is now streaming on WFMY Plus, available free on Roku and Amazon Fire TV. Back now on Try It Today, and always glad we can spend a few minutes with some of the good folks from Alabama's Community College, which of course, the folks over there know that there are a lot of industries out there that they support and help people train for, and agriculture is one of them. And we have a gentleman who knows all about that, Jerry Hackney's Department Head of Agricultural Sciences at Alamance Community College. Good to see you. Good to be here. Um, now, mind us what this Covington Education Center is, is all about, because you sent me an email about it. Tell me about it. Okay, so back in 2019, uh, the college received an anonymous donor uh, acquired for us 47 acres. It okay. was named after Bill and Nancy Coveting, and it was their desire to keep it an agricultural teaching lab. Cool. So we have been working in that on that farm, developing it, and uh, having classes start to meet out there, and um, we're honoring their wishes by making it a, an agricultural teaching facility. I just think that's great. What kind of things, you know, somebody's watching this and say, hey, Jerry, what kind of things do you teach? I mean, is it just, you know, how to plant seeds or is it how to understand the science of things? Or give me some kind of impression of where, you, okay. where you're going with it. So where we're headed with it, um, we see it as a teaching facility where people will have uh, experience in knowledge in small vegetable production, some small crop production. We'll have large animals on site. We'll, we currently have meat animals on site. We have uh, meat uh, chickens and turkeys. We um, are getting ready to have meat rabbits. Um, so our plan is it's going to be a very diverse uh, horticulture uses it. There's going to be uh, some horticulture facilities on the property such as um, uh, turf plots, irrigation plots, nursery plots. So it's a very broad, but it uh, it touches a lot of areas in agriculture. Why, why do you think, let me put you on the spot, why is this uh, the center and what you're doing with it so unique? I mean, are, are there a lot of centers like this around the state? There or? aren't. And I think we will probably be one of few, if not the only facility like this in the community college system for us to have that large of a facility to utilize. Right. There are some other schools that have, you know, some agricultural facilities, but I'm not aware of anyone that has 47 acres that is dedicated just to the agricultural industry. Uh, I think you also mentioned an email that you sent me that we were talking about future plans, you know, so I want to ask you what are the future plans, but I was also struck by the thing that I believe I was reading between the lines that you're trying to do something with vet techs. Yes, we are. So we have been working, myself and other people as well, uh, securing funding so that we can develop the farm. We do have a master plan that we're working off of. Um, we do have a vet tech program that will open in fall of 25. Uh, the farm will be key to that operation taking place. But vet tech does require some special needs, and so we had to have specialized facilities. So we were we received the Gold Leaf Grant, which is going to help us to establish a uh, large animal teaching barn. That's just great because there's such a shortage of vet techs, uh, especially in the large animal industry. Yeah, uh, because most of your vet tech programs cater specifically to smaller animals. Right. Uh, we still have to cover 17 species. 
but we will have a large animal facility on site and we'll have large animals on site 12 months out of the year. Before time gets away, I want to make sure I'm clear on something. Now, this is a two-year program, right? Yes, it is. All right. But now uh, here we are uh, taking the program uh, in the fall. Is there a certain time you have to register by to get involved in these in the ag program and the things you're doing at the center? Any ag pro- you can apply at any point in time for ag programs. Vet tech that will be a little bit different because it is uh, limited entry, and so those applications will be available in the spring. But if it's an ag student wanting to pursue horticulture, ag programs, or animal care, they can apply at any time. All right. Up on screen, Alamance CC, of course, stands for communitycollege.edu. That's alamancecc.edu. Jerry, I hope you come back sometime and keep us updated on what's going on with the department. I'll be glad to. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We'll be right back after this. North Carolina's economy is growing, bringing new businesses and opportunities. The need for electricity is growing too. At Duke Energy, we're meeting the challenge, providing even more electricity that's cleaner, reliable, and that stays affordable. We're getting out of coal and reinvesting in our communities with a diverse, balanced mix of energy sources and making targeted upgrades to the grid so that North Carolina can thrive in a smarter energy future. I feel like I want to pay tribute to this gang. I mean, the work they do mainly behind the scenes to help so many people, all of us throughout the region in the programs they offer. And I want to talk to them about some of that today. My good friend, Matthew Dolge is with us on the right. He's executive director of Piedmont Triad Regional Council. He brought two special guests with him. Nakia Beal is administrative coordinator for community development. Drew Corbett, supervisor of community development. Good to see y'all. Thank you, Jim. Matthew, let me start with you quickly, and then we'll just sort of focus on these two young people here. Um, just remind people what the mission of PTRC is. So PTRC is you know, a membership organization of the cities and counties in the triad, and, and I guess the bottom line is we're working to improve the lives of citizens here in the region with services uh, to those local governments. And one of those that we want to pinpoint is this weatherization program. So, Drew, let me, let me go to you for a second. Uh, give me some of the specifics about the weatherization program, how it works and what it is. So the weatherization program was actually created in 1946. It's there for an energy efficiency program. It's there to help the client save money, which everybody loves in this day of age. We do that by installing simple measures such as insulation, air sealing. We look at HVAC units, make sure they're functioning correctly. Uh, the byproduct of that is that it actually helps us to make the house more comfortable and more safer for the client to live in. Now, what, what do you mean, I'm, we didn't rehearse this or anything, what do you mean when you're, you're, you're checking these things and, and, and windows and all this stuff? Do you send somebody in? Do you recommend somebody go in? Do you have a team of people? How does that work? So what we have is a group of inspectors that we send out. They're BPI certified energy professional inspectors. They go in, they do blower doors, they do all types of calculations. We look at the square footage of the home, the overall condition of the home. We bring all that information back and we actually run a computer software program and that tells us what we can do to best serve that client's home. And then what happens if you find some things that need to be done? How does it get done at that point? At that point in time, luckily I have Miss Nakia Beal here. She is the person who handles all of our coordinating and we send people back out, contractors to actually take care of the work in the house and then we send inspectors back to final that uh, work that's been done. Yeah, Nakia, who's, who's eligible for this? So people are watching and say, hey, this sounds great. Now, how do I know if I can take advantage of it? All homeowners are eligible for this program. You just have to income qualify. It's based on the income and the number of people that are in the home. So there's an income level cut off and they'll check with you. Can they do that online? Should they call you? Because I'll put up a website in just a minute, but is it the best? How's, what's the best way to find out if I'm eligible? You can do it online. You can call in. Um, we have a person that answers the phone for just weatherization and can answer all questions for weatherization. Right. What are the, uh, it doesn't matter who answers this, I mean, I, but I'm just curious, what are the long-term benefits for all of us if you're doing this weatherization program? Long-term benefits varies. Uh, like I said, one, it makes the house healthier for the clients to live in. It, it cuts down on several pollutants that's in the house by us tightening it up. It also helps them with their pocketbook at the end of the month as well. It lowers their power bills. It also helps the grid 
that we're all susceptible to. Yeah, you're putting less stress on on the on the uh, Duke Energy thing there too. And the key, I mean, I, I just is it a difficult application thing to do? Because sometimes people get a little bit, you know, I don't know if I want to. Is it long to fill it out? I mean, is it difficult or what? It's not difficult at all. Um, it's more questions about you have to have your ID, of course, um, your income going backwards twelve months, right. and then your energy going backwards twelve months. We look at whatever did whatever happened in the past is what we're more Copy concerned the about. Copy energy bills, yep. and stuff Copy like that. Copy the energy, your gas bill, just things of that nature. What a great program, Matthew, isn't it? Fits in and with Jim, your mission. The, the, the big thing, and you hear so many times, if it sounds too good to be true, you know, don't believe it. But I will tell you, you know, folks who qualify this program, it's 100% paid for. They don't pay for anything in this. And then it allows them to save money. And for folks like the elderly on fixed income, hey, who may have a hard time making ends meet, you know, month to month, saving on their energy bill is a big difference for them. And those little things make a difference, don't they? Well, also, uh, real quick, just remember that you can also, we have intake specialists, so those who are worried about filling out that application, we'll do it for you. Good, uh, good advice. I want to put something up on screen here. www.ptrc.org, that's the general website to check it out, or you can call 904-0338. I really appreciate everything you all do and your team. Uh, it makes such a difference for so many people. Thanks for doing it. Thank you for having Always great to see you. We'll be right back after this. Hi, I'm Jim Longworth, reminding you to catch my column, Longworth at Large, and Yes Weekly every week. It's available throughout the triad, or you can go online, yesweekly.com. Fly local, fly easy, fly PTI. Back now on try today, just about time for the round table, but a quick shout out to the good folks here at Senior Botanical Garden in Kernerville. Check out the website, come on out to the garden, there's always something to do and you can rent the facility and these are three guys you can rent too, but they're very expensive. So let's just pass <laughs> over that for right now. On my right, but always political left, Ogie Overman, the great broadcaster and journalist. We held over a David Daggett uh, from the, his previous segment, and we appreciate him being here. And Keith Granberry, founder of Helping Hands Consultants. Guys, let's get to it. Last year, Fort Bragg was renamed Fort Liberty because Confederate General Bragg had been a slave owner. Earlier this month at a rally in Fayetteville, Donald Trump said that if he's elected, he'll change the name back to Fort Bragg. Good idea, bad idea. Okay. Yeah, typical Trump, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you're just pandering to the lowest common denominator, as usual. David? I don't think it should be changed back and forth. I was neutral on it the first time around. Right. I just don't think we should go back and forth. Gee? Very difficult for people to think of uh, that in, in any way it's helped for Fort Bragg. That's what most people think of it is when you think yeah. of the uh, of the uh, army base or, or military base. It's Fort Bragg, so I don't, I don't know about the Fort Liberty piece. All right. Speaking of Donald Trump, the former president has asked Biden to let him travel on military aircraft. The reason is that Trump thinks that uh, Iran might try and shoot down his private jet with surface-to-air missiles. Guys, are you okay with taxpayers picking up the tab for a candidate to fly around the country in a military aircraft, Hogan? Right, wait a second. He said the enemy was from within. Yeah, well. Not not from foreign it, adversaries. No, he's afraid of these surface these air missiles. Radical liberal Democrats. That's right. What do you think? Enemy. I know. I, I would typically answer that question to answer your question. I would typically say no. However, other than Grover Cleveland, we haven't had somebody in this situation before. I think having a former president running for president is a very unique situation, and I think we have to provide adequate protection. Keith, flying around a military jet? No. I think he said, uh, if you're the former president, you're the former president. Now, of course, that eludes you some protection based on you, you being a former president, but I think that you should fly around in the jet that you, that you pay for. It. All right. Okay, as you guys know, members of Congress who earn a base salary of $174,000 a year also get reimbursed for expenses. No problem there. Um, but now uh, it, there's a new thing called the honor system that they're on, which means they can be reimbursed without even having to present receipts. Guys, you okay with elected officials getting reimbursed on the honor system, Bogan? I think it would be lovely to see it make them share receipts. I bet there's hundreds of millions of dollars going unnoticed. Uh, so you're a receipt guy. Absolutely. David. Uh, this blanket statement's unfair, but Congress 
and honesty program is kind of an <laughs> oxymoron. <laughs> but I, I mean, employees in my office, lawyers in my office, I turn in receipts to get reimbursed. Right. Yes, they should turn in receipts. That's ridiculous. Receipts? Ted? Yeah. The problem with that is the things that they are turning in is not what they're being charged for. They, these private planes and all those things that yeah. are big ticket items, they're not, they don't have no receipts for those. No. So the receipt yeah. pro issue is, is a good right. point, even though they should turn in receipts. All right, well, uh, switching gears here. Oklahoma legislators have voted to place a Bible in every public school classroom. They say Bible, the Bible has historical significance throughout a nation's history. That's what they say, and thus it is educational. Are you okay with Bibles being placed in schools, and would you like to see that happen in North Carolina? Okay. How many times do we have to go over this thing about separation of church and state? I don't know. How many times do they keep doing it and doing it? You don't like it? It makes me sick. David. I, I think the Bible is a book. The book should be in schools. The book should be in libraries. It's the method by which they want to do this that I don't think I support. Key. So, so if we have the Bible in school, what about the Koran and all these other books? You're going to have to there you have go. an opportunity for a people who have different religions to have their their books. So I, I think it, I, I'm a I'm a I'm a Christian, but I think also you have to allow for other people. Good point. Currently here in North Carolina, anyone can vote so long as they are 18 and over, or either born in the U.S. or they are naturalized. This fall, we'll vote on a constitutional amendment here in our state. If it passes, it will only allow citizens to vote, whatever that means. Guys, you okay with this amendment? Another attempt from, by the Republicans to limit voting. To voter suppression? Yes, absolutely. David. I'm a lawyer, and I'm going to have to plead guilty. This scenario doesn't make sense to me. We already have rules on who can vote and who can't vote. Right. I think this is a purely political ploy mm -hmm. and has nothing to do with who can vote and not vote, and there's going to be litigation on this, and we don't change our constitution over something like that. I agree, mm -hmm. Keith. I think Mr. Daggett said it better than I could. I'm, I, I, I'm going to let it be. <laughs> it's about All time right. you give me a <laughs> <laughs> All right, finally, finally, guys, there's now a company making exoskeleton hiking pants powered by artificial intelligence, which sends a signal to the pants to let them know to work harder if you're hiking uphill. Guys, would you like to have artificial intelligence in your pants? Ogie. Uh, seriously, uh, you know, my wife is quadriplegic, and if they could invent an exoskeleton, it would allow her to walk even, great. even minimally. Yeah. That would be a godsend. You want some artificial intelligence yeah. in your pants, uh, David? Yes, but I also agree with Ogie. I emceed an event recently where a lady did have a device that helped her walk, and that is coming, and it's helpful for disabled yeah, people. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. All right, Keith, you want some artificial intelligence in your pants? <laughs> you know that's a trick question you just said. <laughs> Do I want some artificial intelligence in my pants? Yeah. Come on, man, I already have artificial intelligence. Yeah. <laughs> all right, well, that's all the time we have. <laughs> That's all the time we have, well, except for this. Passengers on a flight from Australia to Japan thought they were going to watch a Disney movie in flight, but instead the crew put on a, an adult film with explicit scenes in it, and it kept running for an hour before they could change it. <laughs> Talking about mile-high turbulence. <laughs> for all this here, and today, I'm Jim Longworth. We'll see you next week.